So in this video, uh, we're going to talk more about the money market, and uh, specifically, we'll do three things. First, uh, we'll talk about money demand. Second, we'll talk about uh, money supply. And third, we'll talk about equilibrium in the money market, uh, where money demand is equal to money supply. Uh, we'll do all that with uh, the development of a graph. And so let's get get let's get right to it first uh, money demand what does money demand depend on what are the arguments that determine what money demand is in this model there are two arguments that determine what money demand is the first is nominal income py so that is nominal GDP the value of all goods and services produced in a given year in an economy or equivalently the uh, value added, the income uh, in an in economy in a given period. So how does money, de money demand depend on nominal income? Uh, money demand rises proportionately with nominal income and this is often called the uh, transactions money demand since as the macroeconomic income rises there simply is more need to uh, have money to uh, conduct transactions to go about the business that the production of uh, GDP involves. Second, uh, the interest rate. Money demand depends on the interest rate and we'll write that as LI uh, L here stands for liquidity uh, so uh, as uh, mentioned elsewhere uh, liquidity uh, refers to the fundamental characteristic of money which is that uh, you can use it to buy stuff you can have it in your pocket and feel safe since you uh, can get what you need uh, in the store for it which would not be the case with uh, other financial assets so L uh, which stands for liquidity of I which is the argument that determines the demand for liquidity the demand for money and specifically with a negative sign so the money demand depends negatively on the interest rate so money demand rises with nominal income and falls with the interest rate. Let's put it in a graph where we have on this axis the interest rate and on this axis money, the stock of money uh, in the economy. Then uh, we get a downward sloping function like that and this is drawn for a given level of PY so for any given level of PY we have uh, such a function in IM space and uh, we can uh, now talk about what changes in both uh, normal income and the interest rate imply uh, let's do that right here what does a change in the interest rate imply suppose that we have a high interest rate initially here and let's denote that as I1 and then we get a change to a lower interest rate let's denote it I2 then I1 corresponds to M1 and I2 corresponds to M2 so if we have a change in that uh, explanatory variable the interest rate a decrease in the interest rate money demand will rise we're moving along the curve from the point on the top to the point here at the bottom what happens in the process well if the interest rate is so high so to speak uh, market participants uh, will be more inclined to give up the uh, comfort of having liquid assets having 
cash in uh, cash in in hand and uh, buy bonds in order to earn this high interest rates uh, this high interest rate so if the interest rate is high the demand for money will be lower because it is worthwhile to have bonds in contrast when the interest rate falls to a lower level it is not as worthwhile to hold bonds which means that the demand for money will increase fairly intuitive second how do we show that the effect of a change in uh, normal income so the change in normal income is shown in a shift of the money demand curve let me label it here as well MD as I had said each uh, this so that this money demand curve is drawn for one specific level of normal income if normal income now rises the money demand curve shifts outward since the demand for uh, the transactions demand for money has increased so for any given interest rate the demand for money will rise from a level M1 to a level M2 so in that sense normal income is exogenous to this diagram implies a shift in the curve and uh, for any given interest rate we get a change in the level of money demand so the, again positive association to a normal income negative association with the interest rate okay uh, next uh, we can talk about money supply where it is quickly said that the money supply is policy variable so the money supply is assumed to be constant ms is equal to ms bar and is determined by the central bank so the central bank determines the money supply so that in a first first approximation in our im space the money supply is just a uh, vertical line so if we then get a change in the money supply due to a change in policy by the central bank well then uh, we would get an increase in the money supply and we would move from MS1 to MS2 uh, due to that action of the central bank let's put them together and talk about how an equilibrium is attained obviously at that equilibrium MS has to be equal to MD which means that MS has to be equal to PY times LI which is the demand for money so uh, M let me write it out more fully MS is equal to MS bar with the bar we signify that this is an exogenous variable which is determined by policy MD is equal to PY times LI and in equilibrium then that means that MS is equal to PY times LI and we have that obviously already in front of our eyes here how the two come together in the graph namely a MS and a downward sloping MD where the intersection maps out an equilibrium interest rate I star so uh, financial market equilibrium determines the interest rate equilibrium let me say that again just slightly differently equilibrium in the money market determines the interest rate let me say it again just slightly differently uh, the interest rate clears 
the market for money and since a cleared uh, money market a money market in equilibrium implies a bond market in equilibrium the interest rate uh, clears the financial market okay that's a very fundamental conclusion and we shall keep it in mind let's now uh, lastly uh, do a little thought experiment about how this equilibrium is attained. To do that, let's assume that uh, I star, the red I star, is the equilibrium interest rate, but that the that today uh, the interest rate is at this level. If the interest rate is at level I one in green here, we have of course an a money demand one that is as high as this. That means that we have excess money demand. If we have excess money demand, the money market is in disequilibrium. And if we have excess money demand, uh, the bond market is as well in disequilibrium. And so that excess money demand must imply excess bond supply again let me emphasize this excess money demand implies excess bond supply okay if there is excess bond supply what will happen to the bond price so that question uh, pushes us in a direction to answer uh, uh, to to figure out how adjustment will come about now. How do we get from this disequilibrium to this equilibrium? So again, the question, if there's excess bond supply, what will happen to the price of bonds? I suppose you figured it out with excess bond supply. If everybody wants to sell bonds, the price of bonds will fall everybody at the same time or on average market participants will tend to sell bonds the price of bonds will fall now we know that the price of bond bonds varies inversely with the interest rate which means if there's downward pressure on the bonds on the bond prices the interest rate will rise so you see that in this situation here Mark participants will sell bonds which will put upward pressure on the interest rate and that upward pressure itself will reduce the pressure to sell bonds so that we are in fact moving upwards here slowly increasing the interest rate until we're reaching the red point where the interest rate is such that uh, our holdings of bonds and our holdings of money are just in line with the available money supply ms so in that sense you can see how a disequilibrium is adjusted by uh, market participants actions uh, to reach the equilibrium